So I decided to make a jumpsuit. I bought this pattern a few months ago. It's from AK Patterns. This pattern company is no longer available, sadly, so you can't find this pattern anymore. But I will find some similar ones and link them down below. It's the Abbey jumpsuit and it's a jersey pattern. Since I'm quite tall, I decided to add some length to the crotch depth so the pattern would fit me better. I decided to add two centimeters and I just held the pattern piece up by a mirror and decided that two centimeters should be enough. I'm adding the same amount both in the front and in the back so they match. I am placing my pattern pieces on the fabric and to make sure they are straight I measure the distance between the grain line and the selvage of the fabric. I am pinning my pattern pieces to the fabric making sure everything is smooth. I make sure not to drag the fabric too much when I'm cutting because it's a jersey fabric it's easily stretched out so I want to make sure it's completely flat while I'm cutting. I chose to make the culotte version uh, slightly short uh, trouser legs and quite wide. I think they will be really flattering and great in the summertime. This will be my first jumpsuit to um, ever make and also to wear uh, and to have in my closet. So I'm really excited about this. I'm usually wearing a lot of dresses. So I have this um, finished outfit just with one garment and I jumpsuit is the same. But I think sometimes jumpsuits can be a bit more dressy and put together. So I'm really looking forward to experimenting with jumpsuits and hopefully I will like it and uh, make some more. The fabric I'm using here is a uh, cotton jersey. It's leftover from production, from the fashion industry. It's from um, the brand where I work. I think the print is really pretty and uh, I like the the dark colored it's like a navy blue background and i think that's going to be really nice for this jumpsuit This pattern has pockets, yay! That's always a plus, but you can always add pockets if your pattern doesn't have it uh, from the beginning. But of course, I think it's better if any pattern has pockets from the start, so I don't have to draft my own pattern pieces or think about it. Now, after all that cutting, I'm ready to add the notches. So this is something I do in bulk. Um, after cutting out all the pieces I go through them all and add notches and I just cut a few millimeters into the fabric to mark where my notches should be. So for darts I use a different technique. I pin a pin at the dart pivot point and I remove the pattern piece making sure that pin stays in its place 
and then I uh, pin from the other side of the fabric and on the other side again so I have when I split the fabric pieces apart I have two pins marking the dart points so then I can fold the fabric and see where my dart is. Now I'm making my machines ready for this project. So I'm changing out the thread to match my project. I'm changing to navy blue. This is on my cover stitch machine, which I will be using for hems. I test the seams and make sure the tension is right and then I move on to the next machine. So this is an overlocker or a serger if you're in America and I'm changing to a mixture of black and navy blue here because I didn't have enough of the navy blue threads for both machines so this had to do. When I was satisfied with the overlocker seam, I moved on to my regular sewing machine. So this beauty is a Husqvarna from the 60s, my pride and joy. I also changed the needle to a jersey needle to uh, not destroy the fabric when I'm sewing. So the first step is sewing the dots. I'm using uh, the end of the thread to mark where I'm going on the dot, as you can see. I leave the ends loose so they don't unravel. I don't like to backtrack because it creates too much bulk at the tip of the dot. So I just leave them and they twist together and that uh, is good enough. So when I had sewn all the dots on the trouser pieces and on the bodies, I attached the front pieces that kind of wrap around and the back piece. So this bodice has a kimono sleeve, which means it's a grown on sleeve. It's not a sleeve uh, attached to an armhole. So it's quite easy and uh, quick to assemble. I pinned the bodice and I also pinned the neckline piece at the same time so that when I come to my serger, my overlocker, I have a few pieces to sew at the same time. At this point I wanted to see what the bodice looked like so I tried it on my dress form. She has um, the same measurements as I do more or less so I just looked at how the ease looked and uh, did it look big or small and uh, I was quite satisfied with how it looked. If I wanted to make changes to the fit this would be the time. So before all the seams are made, when I can try it on and make some quick uh, changes. I was happy with the fit at this point, so I continued. I attached the front overlapping bodice pieces together to make them easier to fit with the trouser part. And then it was on to hemming the sleeves. So the pattern said to press at this point. I did not. I find it unnecessary. So I just pinned uh, four pins around the sleeve hem and I sewed it on my cover stitch. After that I moved on to sew the belt. So this is just a tube that you sew and then turn to the right side.
I closed the gap in the belt by hand sewing. I used a slip stitch. Now I'm moving on to attaching the pockets. So on the trouser legs you attach pockets right sides together. And now it's time to sew the crotch seam that goes all the way around. So I already made the separate legs, a side seam and inner leg seam, and now they go together. So I'm pinning, making sure everything is correct before I move to the sewing machine. And now comes the most fun part, attaching the bodice to the trousers, actually seeing that this garment is coming together, so fun. So I'm turning the bodice inside out and attaching it right sides together with the trouser part. It's very cold in my studio this time of year. Well, that's why I'm wearing such many layers and a scarf <laughs> because I'm freezing. Also, when you are sitting down and sewing for hours, you get really cold. So if you're wondering, that's why. <laughs> I have had this studio for a few months now and I really, really love it. I recently bought a new sewing machine, which you can see on the left hand side of the screen. So now I have four machines in the family, so fun. And I really enjoy having uh, machines that are like specific to what I like to do. So the cover stitch machine is great for hemming, overlocker for finishing seams and for jersey. And then I have my vintage machine, which is really pretty, but I uh, lacked a few uh, things on it. So I bought a computerized uh, more advanced like modern machine too to do the same job as the Husqvarna the green one but it can do automatic buttonholes and it has a bunch of seams and I think it's a great update and also complement to the rest of them. So I'm really excited to learn how that machine works. And as you can see now, I'm just finishing up the final touches. I'm hemming the trouser part. It's done. I was so happy with the result. I really love this jumpsuit and I will make more. Thanks for watching.